So we're talking about hyperbolic functions today. Or rather, hyperbolic trigonometric functions. Now I'm assuming that you know about the circular trigonometric functions. Okay, what are these functions? Let's take a circle here. Right? The equation of the circle would be something like this. Okay? And let's take a hyperbola there. That goes. And his equation would be something like this. Or a squared, take away y squared, over b squared, equals 1. Right? Now, the, uh, the uh, trigonometric circle of functions are functions which basically satisfy this equation and form what is known as the parametric coordinates of a circle. Okay, so let's just put x equals a cos theta and y equals a sine theta in the equation of the circle. So what we get is something like this. equals 1. Now this is known as the fundamental identity of circular functions. Right? Similarly, the hyperbolic trigonometric functions are functions which satisfy the equation of the hyperbola and form what is known as the parametric coordinates of the hyperbola. Okay, something like this. And here we have a cos, a sine. Right? Let's just substitute these values into the equation since they satisfy it. So we'll get the fundamental identity for the hyperbolic functions which looks something like this. Okay, here you have a negative, that's the only difference. So this is the fundamental identity for the hyperbolic functions. Now, when we talk about, say, tan hyperbolic theta, now it is defined in a very similar way. You have sine hyperbolic theta over cos hyperbolic theta. Right? I'll talk about expressing the hyperbolic functions in terms of the exponential functions that is e to the power x and e to the power negative x right let's just take sine hyperbolic x I'm taking x now instead of theta this is simply e to the power x take away e to the power negative x over 2 and cos hyperbolic x is e to the power x, you add an e to the power negative x over 2. So this is how you can express it in terms of exponential in terms of the exponential function. So tan hyperbolic x would be something like e to the power x, take away e to the power negative x, over e to the power x, and add e to the power negative x. Similarly, you can also demonstrate the sec hyperbolic x, the cosec, and the cod. So this would be something like this. Okay, you just take 1 over cos. So the basic formulae are the same. And the difference comes when we talk about these. Okay, here comes the difference. As you can see here, now this is the fundamental identity, right, with cos take away sine squares equals 1. But in case of circular functions, when you add the squares, you get a 1. When you add the squares in case of a hyperbolic function, right, you get a cos hyperbolic 2x. And, and just opposite to that, when you subtract the squares, you get a cos 2x in case of a circular function. And the other differences lie there. When you have sec squared, you take away tan hyperbolic squared from 1 but you add them in case of the circular functions R similarly with the cosec 
and the property with the sum properties let's talk about the sign in case of sign you have a plus minus here and a plus minus here that's the same as circular functions but in case of a cos in case of circular functions you have a plus minus there but it changes to a negative positive or minus plus in case of the RHS however in case of hyperbolic functions it remains the same okay let's go back to the whiteboard so those are the basic differences in the properties right now I have the derivatives of the hyperbolic functions let's take cos and I have to differentiate this with respect to x so what I do here is I rewrite the cos hyperbolic x as this simply this okay just rewritten now this will give you half which is a constant the derivative of e to the power x remains the same the negative comes out right this negative comes out and this is nothing but sine hyperbolic x so the derivative of cos hyperbolic x is sine hyperbolic x hence the integral of sine hyperbolic x is simply cos hyperbolic x now let's take sine okay so I could easily differentiate this here d by dx which will give me a half which is a constant e to the power x the derivative is the same this negative comes out again to give you a positive this time which is cos hyperbolic x so the derivative of sine hyperbolic x is cos and hence the integral of cos hyperbolic x is sine hyperbolic x right so that's how you differentiate the hyperbolic functions